Hey what's going on guys Ace here and today of course we are going to review chapter 282 and man this shit is pure fire. The writer is quite literally taking us on a ride. This is just pure epicness, I did not expect the game to end on such a high note. First with Isiki's breakdown and now with this, it's really great to be a blue lock fan right now, especially for someone like me who always love chapters like this that are all about teachable moments. And so let's not wait any time and jump straight into the spoilers. The first panel shows Loki in possession of the ball speeding throughout the field, and I love these laser like effects that he has in his aura. Light is always an indication for someone very fast, and so I really love it here. However, the star change up timer shows that only 59 seconds are left before Loki and Noah are forced to leave the field, and thus, if Isigi is to reach a breakthrough, it has to happen in this minute. As we cut to the man of the hour, and he says, So Kaiser isn't really a genius. He is a talented learner who sees the field just like I do. This is definitely something that we've known. Kaiser and Isigi have always been shown to have the same vision, the same ability to understand the field. However, the case with Kaiser is kinda shady because of course he has his Kaiser impact which is definitely a trait of a genius. However, the rest of his playing style is that of a prodigy, just like Isigi. And so it makes total sense for the latter to achieve this conclusion and I really like it. In any case, Isigi carries on. Now that I think about it, everything he said and done until now was perfectly understandable for me. Even the Kaiser impact, the fastest kick in the world, it is a weapon that I can calculate with my brain. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he's not a genius. It is still a god gifted talent, and so I still think he has a little bit of a genius into him. He carries on saying, This isn't an imaginable sensuous strength like Rin and Loki, but the strongest type of design imaginable to the world. Wait, hold on. This makes no sense, right? Because nothing about Loki is sensuous. If you think about it, Loki just has the highest speed stats. And that's definitely imaginable. I don't know what Isigi is talking about right here. I would argue it's the same as the Kaiser Impact. Both are born of pure physicality that cannot be explained by logic. They are like that, they are that scary because they were born like that. And so I really do not agree for the Kaiser Impact. However, as I said, the rest of Kaiser's playing style seem to be the same as Isigi's. And so let's just move on and ignore this point because what is coming next is actually pure gold. Isigi says, The world. Oh, this means talented learners or prodigies fall under the world type of ego within the ego type chart I made before. They are characterized by performing best to do things that seem worthy to the world. And the logic that drives prodigies could be the same thing, right? Okay. Okay, so what he is saying here, that people that adapt like Kaiser and Isigi, people who are prodigies, people who are talented learners, they are a world type of ego, because most of their endeavors, their accolades, all relates to something the world cherishes. We're on the opposite spectrum for geniuses. For example, we have Noah who doesn't care that he is the best in the world, but rather he just wants a worthy opponent that keeps on pushing him every time. And I really like this, it further explains the type of egos that we got before and I honestly want to make a video on these types of ego however I want the game to end first because then I can get full grasp of the types and I can do them just as when I explain them to you guys. In any case, Isigi says, does this mean geniuses equal to self type ego? Wait, I need to think about it. Pursuing what brings value and meaning to oneself is what creates the inspiration and invention of geniuses. So it's really gotta be like this. Hold on, hold on, I'm getting hooked on this analysis. You see, this means a lot, because this way we can differentiate the types of ego for each player we know, without necessarily needing to take a deep look into their personality, and that's definitely amazing. However, and more importantly for this game, Isigi being devoured by his analysis means that he snapped out of his depression, means that he is no longer doubting himself, and that's exactly what he needs right now. He needs a rational path towards beating Noah, Loki, and Ren. And so let's carry on and see what he figured out. He says, geniuses can be found because prodigies are there. They admire each other, confront each other. Because I was fighting with that ego, I realized geniuses and talented learners are not in a hierarchy. They stimulate each other in a relative way. So this is actually a confirmation that Isigi has reached the same conclusion as Ego did in the previous chapter, which is definitely great. It means that Isigi is on the right path. 
However, as he was having this monologue, we see that Loki is about to break through Bastard. However, Raichi and Hiyori block his course. Isigi, however, is still in his thoughts. My head is clear now. I can do this. And this is the confirmation. He is no longer doubting himself. But, as he was thinking about this, Noah catches up to Loki. And honestly, this is very interesting, because we are yet to see Noah versus Loki straight up. We've seen Loki use his speed to snatch a ball that is coming towards Noah. However, we've never seen them in a straight up 1v1 until now. And so, this is going to be really interesting. We see that Loki is trying to go left and right, however without a veil, Noah seems to be a rock in his road. And as this was happening, Isigi continues to analyze geniuses, Kaiser, and prodigies. Up until now, I was trying to compete with geniuses on their turf. However, I'm a prodigy, I am a talented learner. To show my talent, I need a different way, but what could it be? Wait, if talent and effort won't coincide, nothing can happen. So, think like a talented learner, what I and Kaiser who's the same type as me can do to fight these geniuses. Okay, this is rather interesting. So, I think the coordination between Kaiser and Isigi is actually going to come from the latter. Right now, I think he is going to control Kaiser from the shadows. Not straight up control, but rather you can think of it as in manipulate. He would use Kaiser's playing style to his advantage, and that's definitely really interesting. And I theorized about this in a video, however, I want to make a video on this specifically. But for now, let's carry on with what Isigi said about Kaiser. He first started shining in this match when he threw his fixation on me, and all of the choices he made up until now were because of that moment when he threw the semblance of rationality. Okay, so notice how Isigi says here semblance of rationality, but not actual rationality, because it really doesn't seem rational for Kaiser to pass to Raichi and ignore Ness. However, that's exactly what he needed to shed, and so even though it does not seem rational, it very well is. Isigi then continues, so I should get rid of all of my fixations, right? My rivalry against Ren, against Kaiser, and my admiration for Noah. I need to throw everything away. Then what's left in my mind is only one thing, for me to be the absolute best in the world. Oh my god, he reached that conclusion. And also the scene here of Isigi entering flow and the pieces explode from his body. Mind you, this is the first time we see this, because usually the pieces start from his head and go to his body. However, now they are simultaneously going off throughout his body. However, I wanna go back to what Isigi threw. First, his rivalry with Ren. If you notice when the first goal was scored, it was because Isigi was focused on Ren, because he wanted to crush Ren, that he didn't see the gap behind him, that Shiro completely took advantage of. And this kinda confirms the theory that Isigi will have reflexes as good as Shiro's, because now he will not be fixated on Kaiser, he will not be fixated on Ren, he will not be fixated on Noah, he will not be fixated on Loki, he will just be fixated on the best play on the pitch. And of course he will do that reflexively, meaning his playing style will not be flawed from now on, and that's so so interesting I'm not going to lie. Furthermore, and speaking of Noah, it seems that what Noah said about him not feeling any type of challenge from Isigi but rather he feels it from Kaiser, was not because the latter is better than Isigi, but rather because of his admiration. Isigi has never looked at Noah as a potential rival, and thus Noah never really felt that tenacity from Isigi towards himself, and this explains this beautifully. I really need to make a video on this as well, this is really interesting. But let's carry on with the panel, as we see the design for Isigi's new evolution, it seemed that that pattern of the jigsaw pieces that take over Isigi's retina when he is in metavision now engulfs his whole eye but also a good portion of his head. And that's definitely interesting, I mean we've seen it before, however this confirms that it wasn't really an artistic choice but rather it was an evolution to his metavision and his playing style. You could think of this as Super Saiyan 2 to metavision, which is definitely interesting. Carry on with the game however, we see that Loki is unable to beat Noah one on one and so he resorts to passing to Rin in an empty space. There as soon as Rin gets the ball, we see Igagori try and cover him, however Rin read him this time and he completely avoids crashing with him, leaving Igagori in a state of shock. He there thinks that Loki's pass was actually perfect, he sent it to an empty space, which would allow Rin to beat Ikagori without necessarily crashing with him, which is definitely a genius move from Loki. 
There Brinkenstock and Mensa charge at Rain, which is exactly what he wanted. In a true destroyer fashion, he crushes with them and he beats both. There he is met with Isigi, and he is shook because he did not anticipate him at all. And Isigi here is actually very different. First of all, his hair is white. And this has never been done before, usually when the hair is white is usually to signify that he is thinking or something like that. However now it is during a play. Also the pieces flying from Isigi are not homogeneous like usual, but rather some are white and some are black. And this is again another change to Isigi's look, which I'm not going to lie to you guys, this is really giving me Super Saiyan 2 vibes. You know with the addition of electricity pulses and spikier hair, it really feels that this is Super Saiyan 2 to Metavision. Which which is definitely funny and I love it at the same time. But in any case, Isigi tells Rin, There won't be enough, you freak. You want me, right? Rin, if you're the monster of geniuses, then I'll become the monster of prodigies. Ho oh, ho, this is really crazy. This is really intense from Isigi. Then the chapter ends with a face-off as Isigi tells Rin, Let's go, fight the new me. And the chapter ends. Oh my god, this was another 10 on 10 chapter guys, this was amazing, this was so good. Like my only problem with it was the Kaiser Impact thing, however that's not really important at all. The writing is just perfect nowadays. After Ren's goal the writing is just so so good and it's really hooking me up. However I will not be discussing a lot of things here, because I will be following up with two videos this week. The first one is actually something that I wanted to do before this chapter, however I felt that I was was missing a piece, but with chapter 282 I finally got it, and so I will do an in-depth analysis of this evolution to Isigi. And the second video will be about Noah and him betraying Isigi and why it made so much sense. So on this high note, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until next time, thank you for watching.